What a beautiful way to kick off our new sermon series, Hymns of Our Faith. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Ramona Lynn Bethley. I am your lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Alexandria. And I am just delighted as we kick off not only a new sermon series, but as uh, in the Methodist Church, I should also say Happy New Year because it is the uh, the first Sunday of the appointive season or the appointive year, so uh, I'm grateful to come back and serve as your lead pastor for another year because uh, we're only appointed a year at a time, but thank you. But, but I want a tagline that says, and many more, you know. <laughs> Well, if you haven't done so already, I hope you'll please sign in on the registration pads. They are in the black binders to the inside of each aisle. Uh, pass those down, and if somebody comes in, slips in beside you or near you, I hope that you will help them register their attendance as well. We, we like to know uh, who is here with us worshiping. So like I said, today we are starting a new sermon series called Hymns of Our Faith. And I don't know about you, but music speaks to me. Often music will uh, lift my spirits. Music will say out loud the things I can't seem to be able to put into words. Uh, it, it comforts me. It, uh, it says all kinds of things. It's uh, like I'm the woman that will stand by her man. I'm the mother who reminded her girls when they started dating that he's a tramp. Uh, the preacher working nine to five. The sinner, grateful for God's amazing grace. And then when darkness befalls me, I know that it is well with my soul. Music speaks for us and speaks to us. It proclaims our faith, it laments our sorrows, it soothes our souls. Now most of the songs we're going to be featuring over the next few weeks You've picked for us. Last year I asked you what was your favorite hymn, and so we have tried to work that in in several different ways throughout uh, these next few weeks. And just like this morning, most weeks we will have uh, guest artists, featured artists, to help us uh, sing, proclaim, speak, and hear the hymns of our faith. So as we begin uh, this time of worship, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of worship as we pray, praise, and proclaim our faith in you and to you from the prayers we pray to the songs we sing. Come, Lord, abide with us. Fill us with your spirit. Anoint us with your blessings. Soothe our weary souls. Ignite us with passionate hearts for service to your people. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you now to stand as we join together in our call to worship that you will find in your bulletin this day. God alone is our refuge and hope. He is our shelter and protection. From our very first breath to our last, God's love and compassion never fails. So come, lift your voices in praise to God. Bear witness to God's acts of mercy and love. Proclaim God's glory to all who will listen, so that his truth is marching on. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Affirmation of Faith during this sermon series actually comes out of our hymnal number 821. It is Psalm 100. It is a sung response as well as a spoken call in response. So, Elizabeth? I don't know about you, but I like superheroes. They have all kind of magical powers. I know some people get into the great debate of DC versus Marvel, but I just kind of like them all. There's different ones like Batman and Spider-Man and Supergirl and Wonder Woman, and they all have special abilities. Some can fly and some can see through things and some run fast and some have super breath and all that kind of stuff. But here's the thing that I like about superheroes. They are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Superman, by day, if I remember correctly, was just a newspaper reporter. But then he'd go in his magical booth and put on his, take off his uh, uh, eyeglasses, and then suddenly he could do all kind of special things, right? Here's the thing. As Christians, as beloved children of God, we also have superpowers, that God gives us, and they come in the forms of truth and peace and the gospel. And those are things that allow us to love and show grace in all times, in all times and places. And those are the things that God asks us to do in our extraordinary ways through his power and love and grace, even though we're just ordinary people. So I want you all to remember that as we go this week and throughout the summer and the school year, that there's always a time to show extra power and extra grace through God's love. Let's say a quick prayer, and we'll be off to Children's Church. Dear God, thanks for your love and your grace. Thanks for equipping us to be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brandon. Have fun, kids. So today, we wanted to do something a little different. We wanted to um, honor those of you who have served for our country. So for this next song, it's just instrumental until the ending. And we'd like to invite you to stand when Bill says your branch. Um, we're going to go through all um, five of the branches songs. So if you served in our military, we invite you to stand um, feel free to sing along if you remember the words. And at the end, we will all sing America the Beautiful together. So please join us in singing that. And um, let us pray. God, thank you for abundantly blessing each of us in this room. Thank you for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon our country. And today, Lord, we think of all the countries that do not have peace all of the places in the world that do not know your love. And we ask that you begin with us, Lord. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your wisdom so that we may be a light for the world because we love you. 
For it is in Jesus' name we pray and sing. Amen. Army. Coast Guard. Navy. Air Force. Please join us in singing America the Beautiful.
those men and women who stood, if you might stand again uh, uh, so we can properly thank you for your service to our country. Come on. I saw you. Thank you for your service and for your sacrifices. And today we lift you all, all of our military, uh, past, present, future, and their families who have served this country and will serve this country. We know that we enjoy the freedoms that we have today, including the freedom of worship, but freedom has come at a price. It is not really free. So thank you for all that you have done. We also, in this time of prayer, want to lift up uh, Jack Britton Jr., that is Rebecca Morris's brother. Uh, he has been um, sick and in the hospital. He is improving, uh, but our prayer needs to be that his body will continue to respond uh, to the treatment. Uh, Joy Atwood, who is Mark Atwood's mom, fell a couple of times this last week. They think she might have hit her head, and she is also in the hospital right now for observation, so we want to lift her in prayer. I have a couple of birthdays. I missed Lita Dell DeFee's birthday last week, last Wednesday, so happy birthday to you. And today is Patty Fowler's birthday, and so um, we wish her a happy birthday as well. And then uh, Josh and Lacey Russell celebrated 10 years of wedded bliss. Uh, this week. So we just thank you all for your life and your life among us. Now let us go to the throne of grace. Let us pray. Holy One of mystery and power, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, keeping covenant and steadfast love with all who walk before you with pure and upright hearts. Fill our lives with your glory and our hearts with your spirit of love for all people. Give us the strength, the power, and the wisdom to withstand the forces of evil at work in our lives and in the world today. You have blessed your people since the beginning of time, and Lord, we want to be your people, for you are our God. Give us your shield as our covering and protection. Fit our feet with the shoes of peace. Place upon our heads the helmet of salvation. And gird us with the belt of truth as we seek to serve and glorify you in all that we do. Today we lift to you our very nation. We lift every office, every elected official, every member of our military and their families. We would not be the country we are today without any of them, but we certainly wouldn't be what we are without you. Our forefathers honored you on historical documents and solemn oaths. Songs have been written pro proclaiming your glory your teachings have been the very foundation this country was built on. You have been our might, our justice, our freedom, our victory. But Lord, we ask that you forgive us when we do not give you all the honor and praise you deserve. For you alone are our hope and our future. Turn our hearts toward you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So today, on this Eve Eve, I guess it is, of uh, the 4th of July, and as we begin uh, this Hymns of Our Faith series, what better way to focus on a hymn of faith and, and the patriotism that this 
day brings than with the scripture that we find in Ephesians 6 called the full armor of God. So Ephesians 6, I'll start at verse 10, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Paul is writing this letter to this brand new church in Ephesus, and here's what he says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authority, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, still the busyness of our minds. And open our hearts to you, that we may hear your word for us this day. Amen. So the church I came from two years ago when I came to you as your pastor uh, was St. Luke's United Methodist Church. In fact, it was the church that your former pastor, Barry Huckstra, went to when he left here. He went to St. Luke's. So St. Luke's got its name from the gospel writer, Luke, who was not just a gospel writer, but a physician. So St. Luke's has really kind of seen themselves as a healing place, as a healing church. And in fact, over the last mm, 10 years, maybe eight years for sure, has been uh, a recovery church. It's in, it's in their DNA. When, I don't know if they still have this many now, but when I left them two years ago, they had 20 12-step meetings of all kinds, alcohol, narcotics, overeaters, you name it, we had it. And in fact, um, every Friday night, they still have this, every Friday night they have a worship service that is... Uh, that, is, that anyone can come, but it is definitely, it caters to the 12-step community. It is a, a popular band, a bar band, without having to go to the bar. So it's always great music and a, and a good word. So uh, there, my associate pastor uh, used to say, because it's a recovery church, so uh, he was the pastor of our recovery ministries, and my associate pastor, he says, we're all recovering from something. Uh, so anybody can come. We're, we're either recovering from alcohol or drugs, or we might be recovering from a relationship or anger or unforgiveness. We're all recovering from something. So one of my church members, we're going to call her Pam because, uh, well, AA means anonymous, so I'm not going to use her real name. But anyway, she said to me that she loved this passage that I just read, the full armor of God. She said that when she gets up every morning, before she goes in the kitchen to even get her coffee, she envisions putting on the full armor of God. I said, well, well, tell me more about that. She says, well, I start where the scripture starts. The full armor of God starts with the belt of truth. And she says, I imagine putting that belt of truth around my waist because I need to tell the truth about who I am. I am an alcoholic. Now I'm an alcoholic that's in recovery. 
I'm an alcoholic that's been in recovery for 10 years, but the truth of the matter is I am an alcoholic. And if I start to lie to myself and think that I'm not, that's when the battle begins. Well, we, we're no stranger to battles either. We don't have to be an alcoholic to be in battle with ourselves or others. We, we know what battles, warfare, struggles are like in life and in Scripture. While we really want to lie down in green pastures, be led by still waters, both literally and figuratively, the truth of the matter if we're to put on that belt of truth, we wage war against ourselves, against others. There's all kinds of things that assail us each and every day. We turn on the news and we see that Ukraine is fighting for their homeland against the Russians. The Israelis and the Palestinians have been fighting since, in biblical proportions since the beginning of time over territory as well. And the fight continues even today. Scientists are battling global warming. The country of Africa is, is battling for clean water sources and food scarcity. Writers and now actors are battling against their unions and we battle everything from addictions and anger to pride and prejudice to envy and ego every day of every week it's something and when facing a battle well you need everything from weapons of mass destruction to smaller, less cumbersome handheld weapons for hand-to-hand -hand combat. But don't forget your body armor, or in this case, the full armor of God, which our scripture reminds us of this morning. Don't forget to put on that breastplate of righteousness that protects our heart. Are the boots of peace upon which we stand on? That's the when you want to put your best foot forward, you want to put forward the shoe of peace, the shield of faith, uh, which was a, I love how it's described in uh, the scripture this morning, the shield of faith to combat against the arrows of evil. So the shields in that day were, were made from uh, hides of animals and they were hard and, and so they would propel the fiery dart which is what they used right back at them and so uh, that's what we use that shield of faith to protect us against those the evil the temptations that are around us the helmet of salvation covering our head the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When I started seminary, I was the only girl in my class uh, in my seminary going for a master's of divinity. And um, first day of class, first sentence out of the teacher's mouth, first day, says, he walks in and he says, all right, men, draw your swords. And I'm thinking, I don't know what a sword is. I didn't bring one. And then I saw them uh, I saw them pull out their Bibles, and so I had my Bible right there, and, and I just kind of pulled a little closer. And then I was a little embarrassed because, uh, well, it was a brand-new Bible, and so some of the pages were still stuck together. So uh, it's actually the Bible that I use now that is just so worn out. Uh, that was my seminary Bible. But anyway, it's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That will protect us and fight off all the enemy, enemies. But first, the first thing you put on before you put on anything else is the belt. And in this case, the belt of truth. Now, soldiers put on the belt first in antiquity because that was the first step to readiness when it came to getting ready for battle. So you know how when you eat a big meal, especially at Thanksgiving, the first thing you want to do is, what, unbutton the waistband, you know? You want to kind of relax. If you're having a fat day, I don't know about guys, but girls, when we're having a fat day, we put on our yoga pants, 
or our sweatpants or our biker shorts, you know, something with lots of forgiving spandex because, you know, we just want to be comfortable. So that's what's happening here, but the exact opposite. So they put on their belt first so they're uncomfortable, all right? They tighten that belt of truth around them. Uh, they put the belt on. That's their first piece of gear because it, it gets them alert. <laughs> they're no longer relaxed. They are alert and ready for battle. So this belt, this belt of truth, is first and foremost. It's foundational. Truth is why we do what we do. Truth is why we do anything. We go looking, we seek out to find the truth. Well, it is truth is the picture that Julie, Julia Ward Howe paints in her hymn that she wrote, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Now, the Republic here in this hymn is really talking about the northern states, the army, pre-Civil War, the Union Army. And the truth really does go marching on in the world and in life. But this song, however, did not get its start from Julia Howe. As I did my research this week, the tune itself actually probably goes back to pre-slavery and was uh, a Negro spiritual uh, that was sung at weddings uh, with different words. Later it became a British sea shanty, which was, um, you know, a work song that they used to kind of keep rhythm to the work that they were doing. And later a Scottish bar tune. And each time the words were changed, but the tune remained the same. Well, in the early 1800s, it emerged as a camp tune uh, for revivals all along the South, all along this way, uh, as traveling preachers would come and do a revival and preach, they would sing a little song called Say Brother to this tune of the battle hymn of, the, of what is now the battle hymn of the Republic. Say, brother, will you meet me on Canaan's happy shore? Say, brother, will you meet me on Canaan's happy shore? By 1859, it became the battle cry for the Union Army uh, called John Brown's Body. Now, John Brown, it helped them remind them how John Brown uh, was, uh, who found his fate at the end of a rope, uh, he was hung for his work trying to abolish slavery. So the tune went something like this, or the words went something like this, John Brown's body was found upon a tree. John Brown's body was found upon a tree, but his soul goes marching on. Now it was then in 1859 that John Brown's body picked up the refrain that similar to what we sing today with the glory hallelujah, your soul goes marching on. And then at the very end, they had this kind of rousing tagline like you do for birthday, the birthday song, and many more. They, they had this kind of rousing on the very last chorus, hip, hip, hooray for the Union Army. But here's where we meet Julia Ward Howe. She was a published poet and writer she was a leader among women in her day when women really didn't have any rights because she was an activist uh, trying to get women the right to vote. And she was in step with the North uh, to abolish slavery. So in 1861, Julia and her husband, along with Julia and her husband's pastor, were invited by President Abraham Lincoln to come out, come up to Washington, D.C., and help him survey the troops that were encamped along the Potomac River during the Civil War. As they watched the troops parade by the president, they heard this catchy tune. But they were a bit horrified by the words about John Brown's body hung upon a tree. So her pastor turned to Julia and said, Julia, why don't you write some decent words for this tune? So 
so she did. In fact, that very night, she could not sleep. She wrestled uh, in her spirit, and she finally, before sun came up, got up by candlelight and wrote down the words of what we now sing as the battle hymn of the Republic. The Union Army took that song up as their battle cry. Uh, it was finally printed in a magazine, and she got paid $5 for it. <laughs> and we sing it all the time. So, so the Union Army sang that song. At, they, 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 too, took up her words that she wrote for the battle hymn of the Republic, the Republic Nation, the Northern States, the Union Army. And they used it as their marching song as they entered into southern territory. In fact, and I wouldn't be surprised if our ancestors, the First United Methodist Church of Alexandria, didn't hear it in 1964. During the 18-day campaign of the Red River and the Battle of Alexandria, when our second church building was burned down by the Union Army, by them dang Yankees on their way out of town. I could just hear them singing, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Well, after the war, the Battle Hymn of the Republic became a uniting song for the entire nation. Black and white, north and south stood together to sing, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, his truth. His truth goes marching on. And that song, written for battle, has made it into most every hymn book ever since. It was started as a battle cry for the Northern Republic, for the Union Army, for the burning down of First United Methodist Church of Alexandria has now become a truth that we can all sing, a truth that has set all men free, a truth that has set all people free through the salvation of God. That is a truth worth celebrating. Glory, glory, alleluia. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your truth. Let us Tighten it around our waist each and every day as we step forth in peace to sow and share your word with all your people. This we pray in your name. Amen. We join now together in our liturgy for communion. You will find it on um, page 13 and 14, and a portion of it is also in the hymn books. A portion also in it in your uh, bulletin as well. I remind you that we practice open communion and you do not need to be a church member uh, or United Methodist to participate in communion. We will have a common loaf and separate cups, but if you like prepared communion, we have it in the front and the back. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right. Let us give God our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. As you create, created and have loved all people from every nation, so let us love one another. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your own son who did not spare his life, but became an example to us, and his death became a sacrifice for our sin. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, that all might come to know Jesus and live in his grace. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of those who know that we truly are the children of God, let us pray the prayer his son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we are reminded that we are one body, but just like this bread, we must be broken open. Just like the cup poured out, so as to make room for the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can help make us whole. And the cup of blessing in which we share... Is it not a means of sharing in all the blessings that Christ has in store for us? As you come to receive, I also want to invite you, if you care to, the kneeling rails or in the back of the altar and come and pray, linger as long as you like during this time of communion.
was set, come and freely receive.
Let us pray. Lord, we have come to the table. We've tasted, and it was good, for you are good. Thank you for your unconditional love and your forgiveness that reminds us that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord, who died for our sins. Amen. ways to connect in the life of the church. Men, uh, this week, Thursday, is the coffee and conversation starts at nine o'clock at Bricada's. So meet there for breakfast. Also, we are going to start two new Sunday school classes. Uh, one is uh, starting July 16th, so not this next Sunday, but the Sunday after. So in two weeks, we're going to start a new Sunday school class in the Stepping Stones room down that kitchen hallway. It's going to be Bible-based as they search for truth for some of uh, life's toughest questions. Uh, Gladys and Glenn Miller are going to be teaching that class. It's for whoever wants to come and uh, show up and be a part of this new uh, small group. And then in August, middle of August, after school starts, we're going to start another Sunday school class uh, for our uh, fa younger families, people, you know, adults raising kids or the sandwich generation or uh, pears and spares, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's what, what they're going to be and that will, I'll be teaching that one and that will start in the middle of August. Also, I just want to remind you during this uh, Hymns of Faith on July 23rd, one service at... 10 o'clock, that's right, I'm going to remind you every week, one service, 10 o'clock, here in the sanctuary, because the Southern Plainsman, which is the Southern Gospel Group, uh, will be uh, singing uh, a lot of our favorite hymns, and then uh, Elizabeth, you want to say a word about uh, music camp? I can, we have ended up with over 70 kids signed up for music camp, so great news, that's a real camp. Uh, but it, yes, uh, it's wonderful. That means we're going to need some help. So if you're available for a day to help check in kids, check them out, be with us the whole afternoon, um, you can sign up here. There's a music stand right next to the organ where you can sign up and um, give me your phone number. We especially need help on the Thursday of the camp because that's when we're swimming and 70, 75 kids is a lot of kids in that pool. So um, if, if the heat doesn't bother you, please sign up to help us. And I'm just so excited about our camp this year. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Elizabeth. If you want to know more about the Serendipity Sunday School class, there is a flyer back in the back somewhere, I've been told. So uh, be sure to pick that up so you can hear more about it. One of the best ways to connect in the life of the church is to make this church your church. And if you are ready to do that, we would love to celebrate that decision with you. I invite you to come forward as we sing our closing hymn. But if that makes you nervous, then just see me after the worship service. Please join us in singing our closing hymn this morning, number 717 in your hymnals, the battle hymn of the Republic, number 717. Let's stand and sing together.
I want to challenge you and encourage you to take the truth of Christ. Put on that belt of truth and take that truth with you where you work, where you play, and where you live. And may the peace of God be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.